Greetings, physics students. I wanted to take a few minutes and go over the highway bridge design problem. Let me make this a little bit smaller. And so what we have in this problem is a highway truck going around an elevated bridge in this direction. And this would be like an 18-wheeler. The weight is given right here, 80,000 pounds, which is actually the weight of a fully loaded 18-wheeler. And we're given the radius of the curve over here, 230 feet. And so this is an elevated structure, as you can see down here from section AA. The truck is, is on the curve. It's a banked curve. And section AA is given right here. Anytime a blueprint like this says a section, like section AA, it's as if you're taking a slice through the bridge at that point as you can see here by comparing section AA down below with the plan view up there. So the roadway here is basically supported by a whole bunch of columns. And so on the plan view, these columns might be, you know, spaced along the curve like this. There'd be, you know, a ton of them just holding up the bridge. And then this is supposed to represent a tunnel, exiting a tunnel down here and then entering a new tunnel up there. So this would be a windy mountain road. He's coming out of a tunnel, going around a bridge, going around a curve, and then entering another tunnel over here. So in designing a bridge like this, you have to think about a couple things. You have to think about the weight of the bridge and the truck and the traffic. That's going to be going that direction. And so it has to be designed with enough strength in these columns to support the weight. But you also have to think about the forces set up by the truck speeding around this corner and that would be centrifugal force trying to pull the bridge trying to tip the bridge over if you want to put it that way in that direction so in other words as this truck is speeding around this corner well not speeding but let's say going 30 40 miles an hour it's inducing a centrifugal force a sideways force on the bridge structure trying to tip over the bridge structure. And that will end up being a surprisingly large force as we will find out in this problem. Okay, first let me make a comment about centripetal versus centrifugal. Some physics books will tell you that centrifugal force is just a pseudo force, it doesn't really exist. And that we should always be using the term centripetal force. But I'm gonna argue that they're basically two sides of the same coin. There are two sides of the same phenomenon that's going on. One is the reaction to the other. In other words, centripetal literally means moving towards the center. Centrifugal, centrifugal means fleeing the center. And which term you use depends on your frame of reference. So from the standpoint of the truck, it's as if a force, a centripetal force, is pulling the truck inward, keeping it in the curve, keeping it from flying off the outside of the curve. But from the standpoint of the bridge, it's a centrifugal force. It's pulling, it's trying to tip the bridge over. It's pulling the bridge outward from the center. And in this problem, since we're concerned about designing the bridge, I'm going to use the word centrifugal in this. In either case, the formula is the same. F sub C is MV squared over R. So now let me bring the design statement back up here. I didn't even realize that it escape to the next page. You have been hired to design a curved highway bridge in a mountainous area. The highway emerges from a tunnel and the bridge must make a 90 degree gradual turn before entering another tunnel. You must design the concrete bridge supports these gizmos here. Uh, so they not only support the weight of the bridge and the traffic but also withstand the centrifugal force created by traffic going around the curve exemplified by this truck. So there's going to be two parts to this. Calculate the centrifugal force exerted on the bridge by this truck going at two different speeds and compare. And then calculate the ideal banking angle that you would design on this roadway such that in icy conditions, in other words no friction, the truck will not slide inward and crash you know, that direction, or will not spin out and crash in that direction, assuming these two speeds. So part one, we'll use this equation, where M is the mass of the truck. We're going to need to figure that out in slugs. 
velocity is given in miles per hour, we're going to need to convert that into feet per second. And the radius we're given in the problem. So step one, in order to figure out the mass of the truck, we use Newton's second law and we rearrange it like that. And we put 80,000 pounds up top and we put 32 feet per second squared in the denominator, which is the acceleration of gravity in the US system. And we just solve for that. And that's gonna give us an answer in slugs. And then we need the velocity in feet per second. So we have 30 miles per hour. And you know that one hour is 3,600 seconds. And so the hours cross out. And then we need to convert miles into feet, 5280 feet. You should probably memorize that. The miles are going to cross out. So that leaves us units of feet per second, which is what we want. So you can run that out right there. And then while you're at it, do the same thing for 40 miles per hour and run that out. And let me give you some hints so you don't go off on a rabbit trail. The mass of the truck is between 2,000 and 3,000 slugs. 30 miles per hour ends up being between 40 and 50 feet per second. 40 miles an hour ends up being between 50 and 60 feet per second. Okay, and now the radius is given up here in the drawing. It's 230 feet, so we can plug that in the denominator. And so I'll change colors here to keep from getting messed up. So the mass of the truck goes right there in slugs. The tangential velocity, which is just the velocity in the problem, which we just calculated here and here goes there. And don't forget to square that term. The 230 feet goes in the denominator and you end up getting the force, the centrifugal force in pounds acting sideways on the bridge for both speeds. And so calculating it at 30 miles an hour, you get an answer between 20 and 25,000 pounds. 20 thousand to twenty five thousand pounds acting sideways on that bridge a huge amount of force actually and then at 40 miles an hour it's even more it's uh let's see it's between about thirty five thousand and forty thousand pounds it's in that range so it goes up significantly because the velocity term is squared. So even though we just went up a little bit in velocity, the force just goes way up. So you can see why this is important. If you're designing a bridge structure like this and you have, you know, if you have to consider 35,000, 40,000 pounds, you know, trying to pull it this way by just one truck going around the bridge, it's a significant amount. So now question two is asking you to calculate the ideal banking angle, a really important thing in roadway design and bridge design. And again, you're assuming that it's icy conditions, which it could be. This is in a mountainous area. And so there's no friction on the roadway. And when the truck is going 30 miles an hour and 40 miles an hour, you want it to be perfectly balanced so that the gravity pulling it trying to pull it downhill won't make it crash and the centrifugal force counteracting that trying to pull it uphill doesn't cause it to spin out so graphically that would look like this here's an end view of the truck here's the slope of the curve and we're trying to figure out this angle down here angle theta so you want to make a free body diagram f b d out of this so you can kind of analyze the forces on the truck. You basically only have two forces, one pointing straight down, that's gravity, trying to pull the truck towards the earth, FG, and the force we know is 80,000 pounds, that's just the weight of the truck pulling it down. And there's also the centrifugal force trying to pull it outward, and the centrifugal force depends on the speed, but we just calculated it for both speeds up above. And so that's the number you would plug in there for the pounds. And what you're really interested in is balancing 
the two components of each force like this because you're interested in the component of each one of those forces that acts parallel to the roadway surface so you have two more triangles there so we'll make use of a little trigonometry and what we have is three similar triangles now with similar triangles the length of the sides isn't the same, but the ratio of the lengths is the same, and the angles are the same. And this means that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent. It's just a handy way to remember that. And so now our basic idea is that the force pulling the truck or trying to pull the truck down should equal the force trying to pull the truck up. If they're equal, the truck will just go smoothly around the corner. If one or the other is greater, then it'll either pull the truck down the hill and smash in the center or pull the truck up the hill and go over the edge of the guardrail that way. So that's the basic assumption. Now look at the gravity triangle down here. I've written the 80,000 pounds right here along the hypotenuse of that triangle. How would you figure out F sub D? Would you use sine or cosine? Well, it's the opposite from the angle theta for that triangle, so you would use sine. So you could say in that case, you know, sine of theta equals F sub D over 80,000 because the sine of theta is the opposite over hypotenuse. So you could rearrange that and say that F sub D is 80,000 times sine of theta. Now let's take a look at the centrifugal force triangle, the smallest triangle. I've written the centrifugal force at 30 miles per hour, which is 21,043 pounds, and with a little arrow pointing at the hypotenuse. And we're trying to figure out F sub U, which is this side right here. So we would want to use cosine in that case because that's the adjacent side to the angle theta in that triangle. And so you could say the cosine of theta for that triangle is adjacent over hypotenuse, which would be F sub U over 21,000. And so rearranging there, you would just say 21,043 times the cosine of theta. And since we're eventually trying to find the angle theta, let's move all the terms with theta over on the left and all the other terms over on the right like this. What did I just do? Uh, I just divided both sides by 80,000 and I just divided both sides by cosine of theta. This is times, times. That's not cosine theta down in the denominator. I just ran out of room on the page. It's 21,000 times cosine theta. So if you divided both sides by cosine theta, cosine theta ends up being down there. So now we have sine theta over cosine theta. Okay, let me just give you this. In case you didn't know that, that's tangent theta. Sine of an angle over cosine of the same angle is just tangent angle. You can figure that out for yourself. Sine is what? It's opposite over hypotenuse, like that. And cosine, after all, is adjacent over hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is a cross out and you end up with opposite over adjacent. And what is opposite over adjacent? It's just tangent. So sine over cosine is tangent if we're talking about the same angle. And that makes it easy. Now you can run that out right there. That's a simple division problem. Now, how do you solve that? You take the inverse tangent of both sides. So your calculator somewhere, depending on your calculator, you'll have a button. My calculator has a button that looks like that. Some of your calculators have an inverse button and then a tangent button that you're supposed to hit sequentially in order to hit inverse tangent. My calculator just luckily has a button that says tangent to the negative one. So if you do that, 
you'll get tangent. Tangent to the negative 1 times tangent is just the angle. That's theta. Let me scroll down a little bit. Theta equals this fraction right here uh, times inverse tangent. And you'll get the optimum angle for the slower speed, 30 miles an hour. Just to give you a clue, oh, it's between about uh, 13 and 15 degrees. But I want to know the exact number. Now, that's theta at 30 miles an hour. Theta at 40 miles an hour. You would just simply do the same thing except, let's see, you would plug in a different value right here for the centrifugal force at 40 miles an hour that you calculated above. You would still use 80,000 pounds. So you would have a different number in the numerator over there. And that's the only difference with the 40 mile an hour example. And you would end up with a different, a steeper angle, which you would expect at 40 degrees. And you'll get a, an angle between 20 and 30 degrees now. In fact, I'll give you an even tighter range. Let's say between 24 and uh, 28 degrees there for that angle. A very steep angle. It's very unlikely that a road designer <laughs> would design a, a bridge with an angle that steep. But that is the answer. And so that's this angle right there. In other words, okay, so if you have any questions about this assignment, please let me know.